I have a word to encourage us because of the time, because of the season we are living in. You know, one time David found himself in some challenges, some problems, and the Bible tells me that he encouraged himself in the Lord. Not in man, but in the Lord. Our encouragement is in the Lord. Regardless of what is happening, regardless of the battles you are fighting, regardless of the challenges of life that you are going through, there is a God in heaven. Oh, my son here said, he neither slumbers, neither does he sleep. Hallelujah. He watches over Israel. And the Lord is watching over your life. The Lord is watching over your family to protect them and to keep them from the snares and from the hands of the enemy. Can you shout a big amen to that? I have a word. And I want to encourage us and to tell us that God is a mighty man of war. When God takes over your battles, no devil, no demon can withstand Jehovah when he's fighting your battles. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of, uh, uh, the book of Psalm 68. Book of Psalm 68, we are going to read verse 1, 2, and then 3. Amen? Verse 1, 2, 3. Uh, let me read it. Uh-huh. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, a song. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those also who hate him flee before him. Yes, go to the next. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire. Oh, Shanda. So let the wicked perish at the presence of God, yeah? But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yes, let them rejoice exceedingly. Father God, as we share that word, may that word become a reality in our lives. May that word bring the manifestation of that which you have intended even through this word in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Them that are going through challenges. Them that are going through affliction. Them that are in battle in one way or another. May you take over their battles, O Jehovah, as we share this word. For the Bible says, your word will never go forth in vain or return to you in vain without prospering wherefore you have sent it. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I want to begin by saying that uh, we are living at a time when people are going through challenges in life. Am I talking to us? Yes. Uh, we hear of stories, and may I mention it? The Shakahola story, people are looking for solutions. Those people were looking for answers. Those people wanted their problems to be met. They were going through certain battles, and they wanted a solution in life, not realizing that our answer is with the Lord. Our answer is not with men. Thank God for men, but your answer is with Jehovah. Amen. So you have battles are Jehovah God's battles. The Bible says we are the apple of God's eyes. When the enemy is fighting you, the enemy is fighting Jehovah. When the enemy is fighting the purpose of God in your life, the enemy is fighting Jehovah. I know that there is nothing the devil can look for in God, but he can get it and look it for it in your life. And so, I believe every one of us wants to succeed. Every one of us wants to achieve some things in life. You are not living in vain. Am I talking to us? Yes. You are not in this world in vain. In fact, the Bible says that God wants to take us from glory to glory to glory to glory. 
There is a destiny and a great destiny that God has laid for your life. But the enemy comes to challenge it. The enemy comes to hinder, to put restrictions, to put hurdles, to put limitation. And so we need Jehovah to arise and fight our battles that we may be able to achieve that which God has ordained for us. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Hallelujah. Without God in your life, you can never make it. Without Jehovah being the mighty man of war in your life, you can never prevail. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He says in the book of John, John chapter 15, verse, verse 5, that without him, you can do nothing. Unless the branch abides on the vine, it cannot be able to bear any fruit. Unless you dwell in the Lord, you can never be able to achieve anything. I have come to declare that may Jehovah arise in this season over your life. Amen. Hello. Amen. We are in the month of July. The number seven prophetically is the number of perfection. The number seven is the number of perfection. David says in Psalms 138, verse 8, that God will perfect that which concerns your life. Hallelujah. He will perfect it. That which concerns your life because of his mercies. For he says, you are the works of my hands. You are the works of the hands of the Lord. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. I've come to declare that Jehovah will not forsake you. For you are the work of the hands of Jehovah. God wants to perfect that which concerns you. Where the enemy has tampered with. Where the enemy has interfered with the program, with the purpose of God in your life, God is making it good again. God is making it better again. Perfection means it is coming back to the original. It is coming back to better again. Hallelujah. Can you believe me with Jehovah that in this month of July, before the end of the year, whatever the enemy had challenged in your life, God is going to challenge your challengers. God is going to fight your fighters. The mighty man of war had never failed. He had never lost any battle. He can never be defeated. Hallelujah. He's the almighty Jehovah. He reigns in power. He reigns in majesty. He reigns in glory. Hallelujah. He's above all. Ha, he's above all. He is above every power. He's above every situation. He's above every problem. Oh, hallelujah. I've come to encourage somebody. I've come to encourage you. I feel the Spirit is telling me, if you have been crying, God is wiping your tears. He's wiping your tears. Because a time comes when God wipes our tears. Jehovah God is our daddy. He is our father. I know there are fathers here. There is no time you can hear your child crying out there without you coming out to go and see what is happening to a child. Hallelujah. You have to know. And you have to defend your child. You can even fight for your child. And that is how Jehovah, God our father is. For he loved you. And he loved the humanity. That's why he gave Jesus. He gave Jesus. Hallelujah. To die on the cross for us. To fight our battles. To defeat the enemy on that cross that you may enjoy. Jesus, the son of the living God, did it all on the cross. He declared it is finished on that cross. Ah, he declared it was finished. Why? For you and me to succeed in this life. For this reason, the Son of God was made manifest that he may destroy the works of the enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
I tell people we don't fight to win, but we fight from the position of victory. Amen. Victory had already been given. Shout a big amen. amen. Jesus had already given you victory. You are not going to fight to win any battle. The battle had already been won. Paul says in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him that loved us and died for us. You are more than a conqueror. You are not just a conqueror, but more than a conqueror. In other words, you have conquered spiritually and fixed physically. Hallelujah. When I see fear. More than a conqueror. Hallelujah. When I see fear. You know, I was uh, looking at a... Uh, uh, a fight within a ring. Unakuta, they are mashabik. And they are, they are the people that are fighting in that ring. And when your side wins, eh, you equally celebrate. It is like you have already won. Amen. And so when Jesus won, we also won. Amen. When Jesus triumphed, we also triumphed. Amen. When Jesus defeated the enemy, you also defeated the devil. Let no devil cheat you that he was never defeated, that you are defeated. You are not defeated. Amen. I say it with boldness in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let God arise in your life and may his enemies be scattered. Let God arise in your family and let those enemies be scattered. Let God arise in your business and let that enemy that wants to bring your business down, be, be scattered in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, the enemy can bring you down, but he can never keep you down. Yes. Yes. The devil can bring you down, but he can never keep you down. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than him that is in the world. And if God be for you, who can be against you? And that's why it can never keep you down. I've come to tell somebody, it is your season of arising again. Why? Because God is arising in your life. God is arising in your life to make you rise up again. To make you be positioned again in the place that you can walk in that which God has ordained for you. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know I'm talking to people. Some of you, you have gone through battles. Some of you, you may not have. Some of you, you may go through challenges. May, probably may, some may not. But if you are a true believer, if you are really born again, the day you declared Jesus to come into your life, that is the day you declared war with the kingdom of darkness. Yes. Am I talking to us? Yes. Our degree of challenges differ, but we go through battles. Hello? We go through battles. Your battle may not be my battle. Your battle may not be intense like my battle, but you go through a battle. But I've come to round it up and to declare that God is rising to fight your battles. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Is rising to fight your battles. I refuse to be who the devil says I am. Mm -mm. I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have. I go where God says I go. Hello. When I see fear. Hallelujah. I feel good. If you are not enjoying this word, I am. I am enjoying it. You know, David says, uh, come and test and see that the Lord is good. How do you see the Lord is good? It is through the word of God. The word becomes sweet. You are enjoying the word. Because Jesus said, uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. We eat the word. And when you eat the word, you feel the sweetness of the word and you... Mm. <laughs> and you say hallelujah. <laughs> when I see you here, hey, let God arise. Let God arise in this season for you. Let the mighty man of valor arise in this time for your life. 
and let the enemies be scattered. Let them that have been pursuing your life be put to flee. Your enemy must fly. They must run away. Let them melt like wax. The Bible says our God is a consuming fire. Let him consume them and let them melt like wax. Hallelujah. In your presence. No wonder David says, he prepares a table for me before my enemies. The enemies will be there, but when Jehovah becomes your mighty man of war, your enemy becomes like food. Hallelujah. Then how will God arise and fight your battles? Because we need to take our position in God. God will not come to your position. You need to get to the position of God. You need to rise in the spirit. You need to take a level in the realm of the spirit that God may arise. God fights for us from a certain level in the spirit. Hallelujah. And that's why when God created Adam and Eve, the Bible says in chapter 1, verse 28, that he blessed them. He blessed Adam and Eve. And the next thing is that he gave them dominion to rule over the birds of the air and the animals on the land and the animals in the, in the sea. In other words, they were given the position of authority, the position of rulership. Hello? They were in God, and God was to execute everything through them. And that's what God does. He's in us to execute everything, even against the enemy, through your life, not through the air, not in the vacuum, but through your life. Am I talking to us? So when you don't arise in a level in the spirit, then you don't give God an opportunity to fight for you. Because God will not come to your level of flesh. We are spiritual beings in this physical body. Hello? Hello. And so the spirit man must arise. The spirit man must get into a realm. The realm of dominion. The realm of power. The realm of subduing. The realm of rulership. Because that is where God has called us. He tells Moses, I've made you a god to Pharaoh. We are gods. <laughs> Moses was told, I've made you a god to Pharaoh. Pharaoh was tormenting the children of Israel. Pharaoh was afflicting the children of Israel. But when the time to deliver the nation came, God tells Moses, I'm sending you to him as a God. In other words, I have put in you what is in me that will make you conquer him. Yes. Hallelujah. So you need to know how to position yourself first in God and how in his presence. Know how to position yourself in the presence of Jehovah. Hallelujah. How do we position ourselves in the presence of God? It is by our intimacy with God, our lifestyle of worship. Worship gives you access into the presence. Without worship, we cannot access the presence of God. Hello. So worship is a way ordained and designed by God to bring humanity into the habitation of the presence of Jehovah. Because the presence of God is a weapon by itself over your life. Yes. Am I talking to us? Yes. So the church needs to get back to the place of true worship. Not entertainment. Not entertainment. Not performance. We need to come to the place of true worship. It is worship that changes the atmosphere. It is worship that makes you walk in an atmosphere that carries God, that manifests God, that reveals the reality of God. Let me take you as I teach you slowly. Amen? Amen. 
Bwana sifiwe. So God is looking for worshipers. God is not looking for churchgoers. Uh-uh. He's looking for worshipers. Neither is God looking for preachers. Uh-uh. He's looking first for worshipers before preachers. Hello? Because he needs us in his presence. Psalms 91 says, Them that dwell in the secret place of the Most High. The secret place of the Most High is the place of the presence. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And we become like chicks that are hidden under the wings of the mother. That's how he hides us. Hello. Colossians 2.10 says, we are complete in him, in Jehovah, who is the head of all principalities and powers. I, you are complete. Where were umetosheleshwa? Daniel yule aliyemku wa anga. Aliyemku ya maro. Aliyemku ya ufame wa giza. Where were umefichwa? Wewe umetosheleshwa. Ay, 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 ay. Ha! And you are complete in him. Who is the head of all principalities and powers. When you are in Christ, you are complete. You are complete. You are above the principalities and powers. Hallelujah. Am I talking to you? So we need to get to the place of the presence. I love David in Psalm 63. David had a cry. He says that, oh God, thou art my God. You know, a time comes when God is not our God. He's my God. It should be your God. Yes. Relationship is about a two-way, not a three-way. It is between two people. So David says, thou art my God. Time has come that God should become personal in your life. Your relationship with God should be personal. Usinue mikono maana umekuja kanisani and everybody is lifting hands. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, hallelujah. Unaeza inua mikono hata ukiwa kwa nyumba yako when you are alone. You are worshipping him. When you are driving, you are worshipping him. When you are cooking, you are worshiping him. When you are walking, you are worshiping him. Hallelujah. A heart of worship is a heart that remains connected to him, who is the source of your life and the source of your victory. Some of us, we can be talking, and inside we are singing, we are worshiping. Hello. Am I talking to us? So you need to know how to abide it's not about today when I'm in the presence and tomorrow I'm outside. I'm a jaluo. When you remove fish from the water, umeiwua. When you remove fish from the water, you have killed the fish. The life of the fish is sustained where? In the water. In the water. So your life is sustained where? In the presence of Jehovah. Amen. When you come out from the presence, you are dry. Yes. Hello. You know, David had a cry when he was in the wilderness of Judah. He was in a dry, wilderness is a dry place. And he's saying, oh God, thou art my God. Early in the morning will I seek you. For my soul thirsts for you. And my flesh uh, is longing for you. There has to be a desire for Jehovah. Mm. I know I'm talking something that is so deep and so hard for some of us. There have to be a desire for God in your life. Before you seek for things, seek for him. Before you long for things, long for him. Before you need things, need him. Hello, muna ninyitha uko nyuma. Muna ninyitha vizuri, hallelujah. Before you need that house, need God. Before you need that car, need God. 
When you find him, you find everything you need. Jesus told the disciples, God knows what you need. He knows you need food. He knows you need clothing. He knows. He knows. Hello. The heathen seek after these things, but we need to seek the kingdom and the righteousness thereof. Begin to seek God. Tafuta mungu. Tafuta uso wa mungu. Uwe na kiu kwa sababu ya hui mungu. Uwe na njaa ya kutafuta hui mungu sio vitu kwanza. Hallelujah. Uwe katika uwepu wa bwana. Ambia mungu na kuitaji. Na kuitaji. Wewe ndio na kutafuta sio vitu kwanza. Am I talking to us? David says that I may behold your glory and your power as it was in your sanctuary. Wapi nguvu za Mungu katika nyumba ya Bwana? Oh. Wapi uwepo wa Mungu katika nyumba ya Bwana? Wapi utukufu wa Mungu? Ninaposema nyumba ya Bwana, si maanishi mjengo na maanisha wewe na mimi. Ooh. Wewe we are the temple. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That I may behold your power. Child of God, we should be walking in that power today. We should be walking in the glory today. Hallelujah. We should be exhibiting the power of God. Tunakutana na mgonjwa, unasema pokea uponyaji mara moja. Why? Because you carry the power that is able to give back life. Am I talking to us? In the presence. We need to be worshippers. Your worship to you na worship hapa kanisani. Even in your own house, be a worshipper. In your own business, be a worshipper. In other words, I'm not talking about singing. I'm talking about the posture of your heart. How is your heart? How have you positioned your heart? Is it in God or in things? Is it carrying God or, you know, when you worship, you enthrone Jesus in your heart. Wakati unabudu mungu, unampatia sehemu yake in your heart as the Lord of Lords. You enthrone him as the King of Kings. He's seated in you as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He begins to release that atmosphere, that life of the spirit from within you that is able to fight your battles and give you victory. Second, ooh, you need to position yourself in the word of God. Without the word, God does not do anything. He says, I watch over my word to perform. He told Jeremiah, I watch over my word to perform. So what has filled your heart? Is it the word of God or words? Is it complaints? You know, many of us, we have put ourselves in prison, in our own prison, by the words we speak. Jesus says, you will be judged by the words you speak. The words you speak will judge you. The words you speak will position you, either in God or in the enemy. So, be a man or a woman that knows how to embrace and to keep the word in your heart. Paul says, I believe in Colossians 3.16, that uh, your word, amen, I'm enriched by your word in my heart. Amen. 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 So let you be rich in the word of God. So that when you are challenged, you know how to release the word as a weapon from you. When Jesus was challenged in the wilderness, he never spoke words. He spoke the word. He said it is written. Hello. Tutamwambia imeandikwa shetani tutamwambia ime speak the word tell the devil what is written in that challenge hello you have no money jehovah is jehovah who jehovah jireh he is the lord our provider he became poor that i may be rich oh that's what i tell the devil 
Remember Jesus became poor that I may be rich. And so I am rich. By the word of Jesus, I am rich. I may not have a bank account, but I am rich. I may not have money in my wallet, but I am rich. Amen. Hello. God does not design you by what you don't have. It is by his word. His word is final. The Bible tells me he has exalted his word above his name. Stand by the word. Declare the word. Tell the devil it is written. By the stripes of Jesus I was healed. 2,000 years ago, Jesus prevailed over the enemy. Hello. Tell him Jesus took my garment of heaviness and gave me the garment of praise so I can praise the Lord. And begin to praise him. He took the garment of ashes so that he may give you beauty for ashes. Musiana wa mungu, tembea ukisema mini murembo. Hallelujah. Sio sura ya manadamu ni ya yesu ndani yangu. Hallelujah. Amen. Declare it. Na utakuta mwanaume anakuja tuna anakuambia, can I marry you? Because already you are beautiful in the eyes of Jehovah. Mwanadamu, mungu waja kuangalia na kuona kama ugly. There is no ugliness in God. Who told you? Hakuna mutu ugly. Everybody is beautiful in his own or her own way. So you are beautiful, fearfully and wonderfully made. You tell the enemy, I am fearfully and wonderfully made of the Lord. Ooh. And that is what you... Hallelujah. You wake up in the morning. <laughs> Look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm fearfully and wonderful. This is for men and women because some men may also feel I'm ugly. Fearfully and wonderfully made of the Lord. Shetani akikuletea mawazo ingine. Already you have given the devil a knockout. Na anakuwacha. Stand by the word. Declare the word. Say it is written. Hello. How many of you say it is written? What did God give me? Is this a husband? I wish I was not married. No. That Look at that man and say, I have the best husband that has ever been. God cannot give you anything wrong. Yeah. The blessings of Jehovah make it rich and does not add sorrow. Yeah. Tell Jehovah, my husband will make me rich and will not add me sorrow because this is the blessing of the Lord. Yeah. And when you keep on talking, the man begins to change. At a welewi how? Because you are talking to God about the man, and you are speaking the word of God about the man. And so God has no otherwise but to use that word to do what he, you have spoken in the life of the man. Women, oh yeah. Yes. Uh, uh. <laughs> when I see you. I'm telling that woman that wants to quit, don't quit. Use the word. Use the word. Look at that man and say, I have never seen the most handsome, wonderful husband. <laughs> Beautifully, fearfully made. When you are in the kitchen alone. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day a lady was, uh, was giving us a testimony. We were, we were teaching some women somewhere. And then they were taught how to call their husbands honey, sweetie. So she went home and was like, honey. And the man said, look at your, eh? <laughs> your mama Malaya Kweneba. Where did you get this language? <laughs> because the African man does not know honey and sweetie. <laughs> so, okay, uko honey na sweetie, ukiwa uko. Hello. Stand in the word. Amen. When I see fear, 
The third, I'm talking about positioning yourself. Let me tell you, I told the people in the morning, the devil does not understand the language of please. He does not understand the language of excuse me. The devil understands another language, the violence. And the violent take it by force. The third, position yourself in the place of prayer. Prayer. Hello? Prayer and praise. Paul and Silas. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Is it in the book of Acts 15? 25. Paul and Silas, they were thrown in prison. They were there in the inner chamber. Ukiambiwa inner chamber ni ile chumba chandani. Kuna mlango ya kwanza na mlango ya pili. Kwa hivyo kutoka ni sugu. Wakafungwa na manyororo. They were bound. Hello? And they were put in there. And the Bible says at midnight... Ooh. They began to do what? They began to praise. After praying or after praising, they began to pray. Hallelujah. And when they praised and prayed, what happened? God allowed the prison to shake. Every foundation. Ile aukoenyu. Ile amababu. Hello. Ile misingi. Yenye inasema umeokoka. Eh, lakini tuone kama utatoboa. You know the Bible says if the foundation is not right, what will the righteous do? Hello. So we must defeat every other foundation that is not of God in our lives. There are people that the foundations of your forefathers are the ones fighting your lives. Those altars of your forefathers are the ones that are saying, oh, umeokoka, tuone. Tuone kama utaendelea. Hapa kwetu, baba enyu hakuendesha ata baiskeli. Kwa hivyo usijifanya utaendesha gari. Hakuna gari utaendesha. Hakuna nyumba utajenga. Hello. And so you are put and subjected by the foundation. No wonder you plan to go home and build. You have saved money, you want to go and build. But the foundation, they are saying, ah, 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 hakuna nyumba ya mawe iliwekwa hapa. Ati nyumba mzuri, ah, hakuna. Lazima urudie nani? Urudie uye mungu alie kuwa na abudiwa wapi na mababu na mababu na wanyanya. But prayer and praise can shake those foundations. Yes. They can fight for you. Yes. And not only fight for you. There is a place of prayer and praise where God involves angels. Malaika wana appear. Hello. Hello. The angels begin to fight for you. I am praying and I pray for you. That may we begin to see the ministry of angels. You know, the Bible says that the angels are our ministering spirits. But we don't see these angels. Atuaoni. Si tuone wakitu pigania. Tuone wakitu udumia. The angels are supposed to minister to us. The angels are supposed to fight for us. In the book of Acts 12. Hello. When James was killed and Peter was arrested. What happened? The church prayed. And they, when they prayed, the angels came. And they delivered who? They delivered Paul, I mean Peter, from the prison. May the angels deliver our lives Amen. from every bondage of the enemy. May the angels fight our battles even through the hands of Jehovah in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The next one is you need to position yourself in the place of righteousness. Proverbs 28, verse 1. The wicked flee. Hata kama kuna mtu anawafukuza. But the righteous are as bold like a lion. Amen. They are as bold as the righteous. Yule mwenye haki. Mwenye ameweka maisha yake sawa. Mwenye aguzi guzi dambi. 
Ehe. Bwana asifiwe. Mwenye analinda moyo wake. Mwimbaji akasema linda linda moyo wako kuliko vyote ulinda vyo. Kesha sana ukiomba linda linda bwana asifiwe. The rashes whose hearts are pure circumcised by the Lord. Sio umeokoka na umebeba bitterness. You are born again, you are carrying bitterness. You are carrying unforgiveness. You are like a kangaroo. Umekaa tu hivi. Maana umebeba na umebeba, umebeba watu, umebeba. Hello. Are you in the church? Ai, mmenyamaza. Hiyo imegonga mahali. Imeuma mahali. Hallelujah. We have to change our hearts. Allow the spirit of God to change your heart. Hivi tu yakuwa huko kwingine na huko huko double standard life. Changanya 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 chang. Yesu apendi cha. You are either in God or you are out. You are either live do you know you can guard your heart until ukifanya tu kosa hivi the spirit of God in you begins to convict you. Unaanza kutubu sa hizo hizo. Si semi ati tutaishi utakatifu. Yes, we are called to be watakatifu. But before you get there, your conscience will be very active. Your conscience will be alive. Any time you touch sin, your conviction cannot give you rest. You will begin to lift your hands and say, God, forgive me. You are not there to carry sin in you. You and sin, you are enemies. Can you say hallelujah? Proverb 20 I think when I say few let me read it there is a place where uh, David says that um, oh, when I say few son in Pro- Proverb 24 verse 10 the bible says that uh, they w- just give it to me yeah if you faint in the days of adversity that means your strength is small when you faint in the days of your challenges in the days of your problem and that's why paul says in in ephesians 6:10 be strong in the lord and in the power of his might in other words in the place of seeking god of worshiping god of praying or praising the power of god is being activated in your life you are being strengthened in the inner man be strong in the lord and in the power of his might in god you are and in the power of the might of god so we faint in the days of adversity because our strength is small you give up quickly because your strength is small When challenges come you quit quickly because your strength is small. You have not built a capacity within you through prayer and fasting and the word and worship. Am I talking to you? Yes. I gave a testimony how I lost money to build our church. I was conned by a bishop in quotes and the money was gone. And when the money was gone thank God I never fainted I remained intact nobody could see in my face that the money was gone I had gone I wanted to go and buy materials and so this bishop told me I'm connecting you to some Asians that will give you the materials nakumbe they were con men and he had planned with them so when I realized I had been conned because I had kept that money in my account I wanted to build my bank statement I was supposed to travel out of the country and I realized I had been conned I was intact haya mwingine ange faint angeanguka tu hapo na faint because it was a lot of money when i see fear hello and god told me don't tell the church and don't tell this don't take this man to 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 the police so mungu sasa nitadu Nimeona wema wako God gave me God gave me a song just to praise him 
Asante, asante Mungu na umewacha pesa yangu imeenda. Wewe ni mwe, wewe ni mwema na uliona hawa jamaa wakienda kuniibia, sungeniambia. She would have told me God, Asante, wewe ni mwema. I had no otherwise. Asante, wewe ni mwema. Wewe ni mwema. Mungu si ungenizuia. Hello. Bwana sifi. But I began to sing and just celebrate the Lord. And you know God opened a way and I got materials and I was given to pay within three months and God opened doors. Nikaenda na ubiri na ubiri pesa inapatikana na peana. Na ubiri na ubiri pesa inapatikana. Na ubiri na ubiri saizo nilikuwa hata nikialikwa hapa ndio ninakimbia. Nikialikwa huku maana sina njia ingine. Sina kazi isipokuwa ni hiyo. Within three months, I paid off all the money. Asante, wewe ni mwema. Asante. <laughs> Praise him in the morning, in the noontime, in the evening. Things are good, things are bad. Praise him. Yes. Hello? Yes. Don't mama. Hiyo mama ring ilifanya watoto wa wana wa Israeli wakakaa katika jangwa wengine wakakufa mahali pale just because of mama ring and complaining mama ring and complaining is a, a delaying tactics of the enemy over your life instead of mama ring tafuta wimbo naanza ku dance nachezea mungu ukiwa peke yako uko na watu dance hallelujah amen Ndiyo maana, when I see people in the church, wanapiga makomu. Mi naona, naona watu wenye awataki kufanyiwa kitu na mungu. Halo. Ni tamuimbia mwana. Wako, yeah, yeah. You are joking, man. You are a joker. <laughs> Ruka mpaka mwenzako akwambie umwambie mwenzako nipe space 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 Hello oh my time is over amen fine eh eh <laughs> Hallelujah Imagine if this church can praise God if this church can worship the Lord miracles will be like popcorn just like popcorn because god is attracted to our worship and our praises he is attracted ndakwa tu mtu anasema wey i was sick i'm healed hey kiwete anasema hey mungu imerudi iko sawa hello things happen when we bring god to where we are god abides in the praises of his people God does not abide in the murmuring and the complaining. Hallelujah. When you fail in prayer, praise. Just praise him. Dance. There was a time I could praise God. Nilianza nikiangalia huku by the time nimemaliza, nimeangalia upande ule sijui nime. Bwana sifi. And I'm alone in the house. Hello. The kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent I'm the humble. The humble. No. No. Hello. Do you know there are things the devil will not give you easily and it will never. It will never. At the devil will just say something that kwambie chukua. Unless you may compromise na eh. Unless you are on his side. Hello. But if you are not on his side you need to use violence kama ni dance tumia kama ni nduru tumia kama ni kelele tumia eh hey. the children of israel they only made nduru just noise and the walls came down bigger shout ah yeah another one you have to abide <laughs> hello in the position of obedience to the authority the authority of God is a covering over your life. The authority of God is the the person God has deposited grace 
and anointing jua maisha yake akikuangalia hivi na aseme barikiwa you already blessed man because the altar dictates your blessing the altar dictates what you are blessing the altar fights for you when you serve the altar when you give to the altar when you honor the man of god of the altar already that is your victory am i talking to you so you find people in the church they don't want to give on the altar they are denying themselves that covering and that grace and that anointing that is supposed to fight your lives when you are well connected the man of god will just say get it at it does not need to pray many prayers uh uh-uh. uh we don't need to pray many prayers paul is saying one thing that we look poor yet making many in other words there is an elevated position god has given to his servant there is a realm that god has positioned his servant in the place of leadership that he can declare a thing over your life and god honors it amen, amen. are we there together when i see you i'm finishing amen. amen how many are blessed so far ni kama mjabarikiwa finally finally brethren amen see god strategies god is a strategist anaambia musa stand still and see the salvation of the lord just stand god you know the nation of israel the children of israel cry oh musa the red sea how do we cross pharaoh but moses is told by god just stand still and see my salvation there are times you'll just remain quiet in the place in the presence of jehovah and god takes over your battles hello he tells who he tells joshua assign people to go around the wall of jericho that this wall may come down there are times you'll just praise him so know the strategy of god david says in psalm 27 from verse 4 that one thing have i desired and that is what i will seek after that i may dwell in your presence and inquire of you hello yeah to behold how the days of my life to behold the beauty of the lord and to inquire in his temple the next one the next scripture for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me he shall set me on high upon the rock that i may behold my enemies wakiwa pale chini wakishughulikiwa na nani na mungu amen finally position yourself in the place of obedience to the word of god amen obedience that is in the book of uh, Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 read verse 4 to 5 amen you cannot be able to punish any disobedience until your obedience is kuna vitu tunaweza omba kuna vitu tunaweza pigana nazo katika maombi but when you are not obedient those things will not listen to you they will not obey you what you say what you pray they will not hallelujah can we rise up how many are saying jehovah in this season take over my battles lift up your hands i will pray with you the word of god is enough take the word of god begin to act on it and god will give you the answer lift up your hands if you are saying god i've been going through challenges i've been going through battles i've been going through issues some of the things that you go through you may not even be able to understand but god knows god sees them 
Lift up your hands and just tell the Lord, open your mouth and tell Jehovah, God, I surrender my battles to you. I surrender my life. I surrender everything that has been fighting me. Everything that has been working contrary to your will in my life. I surrender it to you. I surrender it to you. Just surrender it to the Lord. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Speak it out. Tell it to the Lord. Tell it to the Lord. Shandara Bosaya. Unless the Lord be on your side, unless the Lord be your God, you will not be able to make it. You will not be able to succeed in the time that we are in. In the time that the enemy is roaring like a lion. In the time that the enemy is scheming here and there. Strategies to finish you, to finish your family. It is only Jehovah. Shantari Baboya. Jehovah is your name. Oh, Jehovah. Jehovah. Come on, lift up your hands and sing. Jehovah is your name. Call him Jehovah. Jehovah is your name. Mighty warrior. of your people. Take over, O oh Jehovah. You are our daddy. You are our father. You are our God. You are the Lord of hosts. You are the mighty man of war. O Shatayana Messiah. O Sheteleboya. O Shakatayama Boya. You are the mighty man of war. Mighty man of war. Lion of Judah, we bow down and worship you. Call him Yahweh. Yahweh. Come and do, Lord. Yahweh. Come and do. Come and do. Come and do for them. And only you can do. Mighty man of war. Mighty man of war. Judah, we bow down, Lord, and worship you alone. Worship you. We call you Yahweh. Oh, 
Father, I decree and declare over the lives of your people. Has Yahweh the mighty man of war? Father, may you take over your battle. May you challenge their challengers. May you fight them that fight them. May they be commanded to flee. May they melt like works in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, may they enjoy their victory. May they enjoy their success. May they see you in their life. In the remaining months, Jehovah, may they have a testimony that you have done it to God. That you have prevailed, oh Jehovah. That you have given them their desire. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Give the Lord a shout of glory. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout. A shout. A shout. A shout. A shout. A shout. Father, oh, oh, I feel, I feel an atmosphere, an atmosphere of power here, an atmosphere of breakthrough here. I feel an atmosphere. Lift up your hands and just receive your victory. Receive it. In Jesus' name, amen.